when I had the uh, totally brilliant idea to cover methylated spirits as a subject, I thought maybe I'd get one, maybe a, two videos out of this, <clears throat> but I'd just forgotten how many different methylated spirit burners there are. And this is just a few taken from my small collection of model steam engines. So it's gonna have to be a series of videos four, probably five. So for the four or five people out there that are actually interested in this, I hope you enjoy the videos. The rest of you may just want to give these a miss. <laughs> okay, let's get on with it. Well, this video was prompted uh, by a question that uh, my good friend Rob from the Zenudu YouTube channel posed on a recent video I did <clears throat> regarding the burner I was using, the methylated spirits burner, <clears throat> and he was interested in what well, the flame pattern was and, you know, how did it work and all this kind of stuff. And I figured, well, it might be a good idea to do a little video covering some of the various different types of methylated spirit burners, of which there are many, uh, and talking a little bit about them, construction, pros and cons, this sort of thing, and then we'll light them up and have a look at their flame pattern. We're going to start with Mammoth, and this is a vaporizing spirit burner from the very nice Mammoth SE2A that you can see in the background there, and then we'll just, we'll just close in on the actual burner itself because that's what we're here to look at. Now, if you live in the UK, this is by far the most common type of methylated spirits burner for a model stroke toy steam engine that you will come across. There is literally thousands of those out there. They were first introduced by Mamad on their models in 1957. And basically they were in nearly all of their model steam engines right the way up until when they finally went over to using those horrible waxy type tablets. Very simple construction. It's basically a pressed tin flate uh, reservoir. This bottom bit is just pressed, pressed tin plate. <coughs> the inside it is some wadding. There's a wire mesh over the top of the wadding. Then the top part is just crimped on. It also holds this wire handle. <coughs> and, and that's it. It's very, very simple to make. <coughs> a lot more cost effective than their previous burners, which required soldering. So pros and cons. Well, it, they work very well. You know, they they are they do the job can't argue with that but they have quite a limited capacity <clears throat> you literally pour the methylated spirits directly in through the grill which i'll show you in a minute they get quite hot hence the wire <laughs> handle and you cannot adjust the flame height on them but like i said they do the job so let's get this one lit up and we can have a look at it I should just say, before we get to the actual fire lighting stage, they do come in different sizes. This is a much smaller one. This is off of a Mammoth Minor 1. And this is much, much larger, which is off of uh, the Mammoth SE3, which is the twin cylinder one. Now, I would like to say that this is one I've made. It's a facsimile. It's not an actual, that's not an actual Mammoth burner, but it, they look pretty much identical to that. And they all, they're all the same principle. It's wadding with a mesh over the top, basically. Now you can fill these up by simply pouring the meths in, <clears throat> but uh, I'm using the syringe because this is how I normally fill up my other burners. And as I said, you just gently put this in and it is absorbed by the um, wadding that's underneath. You can easily tell when you fill the thing up because the, um, the meths will actually float on this, come up through the grill and float on the surface. Right, there we go. Let's give this a wipe off. <coughs> and uh, let's see what the flame pattern's like. That's the problem. <laughs> Believe it or not, that is actually a light. That's giving off heat. But you can't really, really see the flames at all. 
it's just it's just almost invisible but trust me there is heat there it's definitely burning just so that you can uh, tell that there actually is heat there there you go so it is a light you just can't see it okay that'll do for the this first mammoth burner now staying with mammoth this is a uh, very nice uh, Mamad SE1 from around about 1946. And this is the burner that comes with it. Now this particular style of Mamad burner was very common in their engines all the way through the 1940s and into the mid, mid 1950s. And uh, these are also, will be well known to anyone who has Mamad steam engines or has had Mamad steam engines in the past. Now they came in a variety of different sizes. I've only got examples of the one, two and three wick versions, but there was a four wick version and I believe there was even a five wick version of this, this type of burner. Now, to my mind, this is just my opinion, I think the, these are truly excellent little burners. Uh, why? Well, first of all, the reservoir is well away from the flames. The, these don't get particularly hot at all they, they are just perfect obviously there's a very thin feed tube to feed the mess to the wick tubes another big advantage with these is that you can adjust the flame height the wicks can be moved up and down or you can trim them so you can definitely vary the flame height and, and it, also the reservoir having a bung in it it's just very easy to fill fill these up i think these are brilliant i think these were by far and away the best of the mammoth burners but of course, these were expensive to produce. The feed tube has to be sold into the reservoir and the wick tubes have to be soldered onto the feed tube. The body is uh, a tin plate for the reservoir, so that's got to be soldered together. It's in two halves. So yeah, these were expensive to make. On the downside, well, there, doesn't really, there isn't really any downside to these. They're just brilliant burners. The only problem you get with them is due to the fact that they're very old. Now, obviously, they were 1940s, early 1950s. Sometimes the reservoirs will rust through. That's about the only problem that I've encountered with these. But as a burner, I think these are just absolutely excellent. So let's, uh, let's take one and light it up. Again, these are very easy to fill. I'm using a syringe, just remove the bung from the reservoir and uh, away you go. Job done. Yeah, now this, this one, you can actually see this one burning, which is nice. Let's get a close on that. So there you go. Perfect. And as I said before, you can adjust the uh, flame height by simply adjusting the wicks, trimming them or basically pushing them further down the tubes or pulling them out of the tubes, depending on what you want to do. Very, very nice little burner. Okay, well, we're sticking with British model steam engines. This is a uh, Bowman M158, quite a nice example of the range of model steam engines. This is one of their mid-range models that uh, Bowman did. Bowman op opted for a slightly different uh, variation on the wick burner that uh, Mamad had used. And that is, let's uh, close in on it so you can have a look. They went for a round reservoir, very similar to the Mamad one, but they generally went for some very nice brass threaded uh, caps for the reservoir. But they, they used a single wick tube, which had a longitudinal slot in it. You can see that if I tip it up. There we go. And basically, they that's all there was to it. And there's a wick in there which goes all the way down the tube and into the reservoir. And that's it. That is the, the, bur the burner. There were pros and cons with this approach. One of the nice things about the these burners is you don't need a very large hole in the firebox to get the burner in. It, it, obviously, because it's quite low, uh, you know, you can get away with just a small entry point, which is great. But again, it suffers from, they suffer from the fact that the flame is right next to the reservoir. The reservoir does get very hot with the Bowman burners. And, you know, it's, it's, it really isn't ideal. Again, like the Mammad burners, these came in a range of sizes. This one is in fact a reproduction, not an original, but all the others are original. 
uh, depending on the size of the engine, you know, depending on the size of the, the burner. Quite often the reservoir was the same size, obviously not that massive one at the back, but the, the reservoir was quite often the same size and they just extended or reduced the length of the burner tube. Filling these, exactly the same process as the mammoth ones, you just take the uh, bung out, preferably using a syringe, it's just easier to do it this way, and uh, in goes your mess. And there you go. So let's get this baby a light. Pros and cons, well, as I said, the reservoir gets hot on these, which is uh, unfortunate. And you cannot adjust the height of the flame. This is it basically but i guess the you know these burners were designed for long horizontal boilers and you get a long thin flame which is pretty much ideal for even heating you know uh, and and they work very very well and there's quite a uh, capacity in the little tank there so yeah they're, they're, the the bowman burners they work they work very well i i don't like them as much as i like the early mammoth burners i think they're the uh, wick tube type with the separate wick tubes i think that's just a much better design but these work you know these work fine and as you can see that's the flame pattern you get out of pretty much all of them you know they're all they're all the same it's either longer or shorter depending upon you know which burner you're using okay so that's it that's the bowman burner